the coolant system the, and the conveyor system, everything's just beefed up. It's just, it's just planned and designed for running all, all unmanned. So, Will, thanks for the invitation here to Olympus. I mean, this is the first time I've been here. I've driven through Stoke-on-Trent many times and seen the building, the building and, yeah. and thought one day I'm sure I'll get, get the, or have the pleasure to come in here. A lot of people the, say that. Well, the, well, the first thing I note when I come in here is it, it's huge. You've got a lot of spindles. Yeah. You've got a lot of automation here. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of component throughput. Just tell us about the company and what you do and where it, where it began. Okay, so Olympus started in the year two, 2000. Um, little place not, not so far from here, there wasn't a lot of us here then. Um, quickly moved on to servicing the customer's needs, getting the product that they needed at that time. And that was what everything grew from. So when I started in 2001, I was the seventh employee. So now we're up to 122. So really starting to, to okay. grow it. And, and how many CNC's have you got here making parts? So we've got 103 spindles across Milling machines and lights. And these uh, working 24-7? Is that the only thing you say? 24-5, yeah. 24-5, yeah. Okay, now now recently you've gone through quite um, a lot of investment. We have. As we're going to see on this journey. And what was the reasons for that and what was the investment? Um, so we bought three H plus 405s. We've got another two on order as well. Um, the reason was just to cut the customer's lead times down. The customers that we see now don't want to hold stock. They want inventory to their door as fast as possible. The automation we had was good. It was a good step from the standard twin pallet machines. This was just the next step for us, really. Because it's the point I made when I came through, and if you walk around this factory, you will see you've got a, a bank of maybe 10 CNC's being fed by an FMS system. Yeah. And I looked and I thought to myself, but you know, these guys already know how to automate. What's the difference between what they're doing now with this investment compared to what they've got and what difference does it make from a business level? Yeah, the, the main difference was getting the data from them. So if we get good, accurate data out, we can actively plan better with that. So we can then put the tooling in soon, soon enough to get the next job going. The, the, the guys program it and it's, and it's there. It's pretty much preset before the work goes onto the actual machine itself. A lot of the issues we have, when we get that order from the customer, we're probably already late because nobody wants to hold stock anymore. They want to get it in and get it built and get it out. They don't want to have any stock there. So we hold the raw material here that we can cut and change to whatever we want. We'll then make that into the product that they want as quickly as possible. Our lead times are hard. Was there any other issues you have with the existing automation which you needed to overcome? and change as well, challenges there. Because when I look at that, I, I like I say, I thought to myself, these guys are already in, in that arena. Yeah, it's just on steroids. So we've got more tools than we've got. We've got double the tool capacity here. So we can leave all that in. The coolant system and the conveyor system, everything's just beefed up. It's just, it's just planned and designed for running all up on man. And let's now have a chat with Tom. Um, he's the man that's in charge of the implementation of uh, the solutions that we've heard about. Yeah, I'm Tom Pedley. Um, I am the engineering manager here at Olympus Engineering. Um, I look after the offline prog programming, um, the tooling and the fixing part. So now this was Will's dream, the company's dream, to do what, what we've done here. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we have other machines here at Olympus which are um, using kind of automated systems, but the big difference with this mature is it's incredibly easy to use. Uh, the machine was kind of sold to us uh, as a sort of like a CNC vending machine, which I'm sure is a term you've probably heard before. Um, and it's, it really is, you know, you can switch work on and off very, very simply. If you need more of certain pallet running more often, more you can prioritize it, it's very simple to use. Uh, we have multiple pallets on this machine, which we can um, set up um, either multiples of the same job on different pallets, or each pallet might have a different job on, depending on um, the customer's demand on quantities for that. Can we get this door open? Sure. Yep. So for example, here you've got a tombstone, you've got yep. a part either side. Yep. So this is just a prototype which we've done recently. This will be going into production uh, eventually, but we can now stack that pallet. Uh, we don't have to touch, uh, disturb that setup. That part can stay set up. Um, and if we need more, we can switch it back on with but, no setup. But, but in general, your man is here and this is where the loading is done. Absolutely. But yeah. you've got so many pallets in such a small area, yep. it means you can fill this up to run over a weekend, I assume. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's your big um, selling point really is is unmanned operation 
keeping the spindle running. Um, and that's something which uh, we really wanted to exploit when we bought these machines. Your batch sizes these days vary immensely, don't they? You've got... Yeah, so what we noticed um, was a uh, different kind of ordering system with our customer. They didn't want to buy, you know, thousands of um, uh, components in one go. They want more of a, uh, a just-in-time kind of um, and, and by style. having more tools like you've got here, so I mean, how, many, how many tools have you got? Okay, so we've got 240 tools in this machine. Um, we opted for the large capacity magazine because we wanted to leave um, a certain portion of that magazine constantly set up. So we standardized 100 tools, which are our most common tools for a particular customer which we uh, produce parts for on this machine. That covers around about 80% of the setups which we would do for that customer. So that means them tools are already in the machine. There isn't really a great deal of tools which need to be set up and then put into the machine. And then, of course, if, once you're cutting the metal, there's the swarp, yes. there's the coolant, all of those things. What's yeah. this machine got that keeps it running? Okay, so what we notice with the uh, increase in efficiency on this machine and the more hours we were getting out of the machine is we were producing a lot more swarp, we were using a lot more coolant. Um, particularly over the weekends, we were finding that the bins, the swarp bins were becoming overfilled um, and you know that was starting to hinder us a little bit. So. What we opted for was a solution from FSE, which is a briquet briquetting machine on the end of the conveyor. With this briquetting machine, what we uh, get out, out into the skip is actually 10 skip pulls of swore compressed into one skip load. So that allows us to run the machine um, over the weekends, overnight, no problem at all. So basically, you're compressing your swarf, yeah. what was in 10 bins, yes, into now one. into one. Into one yeah. so, and, and with all of this, there's one thing I need to know is, has it worked? The information this is telling you is yeah. what you've implemented, yeah. a solution that is the right solution that's given you the savings and the productivity gains that you needed. Yeah, I mean, we came into this project knowing, uh, having a pretty good idea of what we wanted to get out of these machines. We knew we know it central to that. What we needed was a machine that was going to be robust, reliable, accurate, and fast. Uh, the results which we get through the monitoring software kind of speak for themselves, really. We're getting up times now way beyond anything which we've experienced before here at Olympus. Uh, and it really allows us to build on a, a good foundation now. It's more of a copy and paste. Now, when we buy a new machine, we, we can take what we've learned on the journey from when we first started and we can just implement it again and again and again. But we are also constantly improving that as well. It's the full solution. It gives us everything. We've got the software that we can, we can see what's going to happen with that. The machine is unbelievable. It just runs forever. It just really lasts. We've got 142 hours runtime out of a six pallet machine. So it's just unbelievable.